Welcome back to TGIF with Funky Dineva, Al Reynolds, and sitting for Gabby with the T is Jerome Trammell. Uh, Ex-NFL player Colin Kaepernick got a sweet new deal. The football player took a knee for Black justice during the national anthem, has been given his own ice cream flavor. Ben and Jerry's collaboration with Colin's Know Your Rights camp in honoring the pro baller, calling his ice cream flavor Change the World. It's great, like, companies that are... you know, like Nike and Ben and Jerry's work with him. But do you think, why do you think the NFL is refusing to follow suit? Why everybody want to give this man money except the damn NFL? Well, the NFL gave him his settlement. And I'm not, I'm not saying that that's enough, but I feel like they feel like if they want to invite him on one, to the te- on one of the teams, they're going to have to do a lot of changes within the company that they're not ready to do. And at this point, people are so worried about whether he will play again. I feel like we need to ask him, do you even want to play? He might not, not even want to play in the NFL again. Like, he got it good. He has this, this sweet spot where he get these endorsements and you know, speaking. He's a, you know, black pioneer. He might not want to be on the field being tackled and concussions and all that other stuff. Like, just stay off the field. He's from Milwaukee like I am. So I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for him. But is that something that he wants? Why people want that for him? No, he definitely he definitely wants it. Hello, he had a tryout that they moved locations. He had scouts from every team there. It's definitely something that he feels that he's been ostracized from. Uh, Colin Kaepernick definitely deserves to still play in the NFL. But you know what, Claudia? You know where I'm going with this. It's okay because he's still going to get his money anyway. The ice cream industry is $11 billion industry. Ben and Jerry's did $700 million last year in sales. Colin Kaepernick getting his money is getting his money. Proud, big ups to my frat brother, Colin Kaepernick. All the Kappa Alpha Psi brothers out there, big ups. And he's being smart. You're going to box him out of the NFL? Well, guess what? He's going to box you out in all his business opportunities. That's all I got to say with that. I didn't know you were Kappa. Absolutely. freaking 25 you years in the barn, baby. You ever drop the stick? <laughs> Grab a stick, no, but a cane. Okay, my bad. Oh, I didn't mean to disrespect. Okay, uh, Q, what you got to say about this story? You know, to answer your question about why he's not playing in the NFL, I think we should look at Donald Trump. Donald Trump has done a very good job of giving us an insight into the way that rich and powerful white men think. And I think the reality of the situation is they will cut off their nose to spite their face for the simple fact that this Negro is not going to push our hand, sway our hand. Who is he? We're not cowering to him we're not giving in to him simply because he's a black man we're not going to do it and i just think that's really what it boils down to when it comes to him playing in the nfl they're like this negro right. is not gonna make us do nothing we don't want to do that's it right. does feel very uh let's teach this boy a yeah, lot and i need black people to get up the bandwagon of supporting this narrative and say well he wasn't that good of a quarterback or you know he's not all the way black stop it this man did sacrifice a lot. If you don't get to the NFL by just, it's not being, it's not a hobby. This was a dream since he was little. And I don't give a damn if someone is 50% black, 25% black, 10% black. He's a black man in America. You see how they treat him. And they had the audacity to go after some raggedy ass white quarterback that been retired for 10 years. Was it, was it Cutler? One of them, I, I might be wrong about the name, but it was someone who was a smoker, hadn't been playing for years, right. they offered him a contract. So, oh, uh, so we got we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, I want to talk to you about Wiz Khalifa, how he's been criticizing for kissing his son on the mouth on social media. We have more TGIF when we return. Oh, we're back on the show, sir. Oh, sorry. <laughs> come back. He's been fired. Don't get fired before we really here. Uh, welcome back to TGIF with Funky Dineva, Al Reynolds, and joining us, sitting in for Gary with a T, is Jerome Trammell. Let's just jump right on in. We're going to try to get through a lot of these topics. Okay. Rich Khalifa is being criticized for showing his son affection. The rapper posted a video online uh, that was recently removed where he hugs his son and then kisses him on the lips. Twitter followers responded with messages like, Wiz Khalifa out of pocket for kissing his son like that. A uh, gentleman has toxic masculinity made it wrong for a man to kiss his own son on the lips. And would people react differently if there was a woman kissing her daughter? So I think, yeah, I think, I think partially. And then I also think American cultural norms, you know what I'm saying? In other cultures, people show affection that way. And it's not a problem. I just think it's the way we're socialized and, and, and indoctrinated that it looks 
off to people. I'm not going to lie. It looks off to me and feels a little off. But after I take a pause and look at it for what it is, it's not abuse. He loves his son. It's not sexual in nature. I have no problem with it. Okay. Jerome? I have no problem at all. I think it's very much so toxic masculinity. And here's the thing. Um, no matter what backlash I would have got for posting that post, I would have not taken it. I, I wouldn't have taken it down. I would have told them, if you have a problem with me kissing my son, you can kiss my ass. And that's it. That part. Al Reynolds. Hey, the, Wiz Khalifa can do nothing wrong ever in my book. That's and the fact that he spends as much time, I love watching his IG, the fact that he spends that much time with his son, he's in his son's life, he's responsible for the son that he made, he's a real daddy. Hey, Wiz, keep up, keep it up. I'm, I'm down for it all. I'm gonna need these hateful MFers online to stop being mad at everything. When your own lives was raggedy as hell, I'm right. sick of ladies, girls with no nightstand, matches on the floor, matches on the floor, no Wi-Fi, being so judgmental of everybody else, people who never even met their daddy complaining about a real daddy showing up for his son. You got something right. to say. These men that don't are not there for their own sons have something to say. Did it look weird? Yes. But Wiz Khalifa is weird anyways. That's his son. He loves his son. I'll be happy. No, 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 no. That's not fair. Don't say that it looked weird. It looked weird to you. Where well, I'm that's what I'm speaking from. I'm speaking from me. Look weird. We got to get, we got to change the narrative. It's not weird for a father to love their son and kiss them. That's, that should not be weird. And it, our, it should and be weird, but, weird. But Al, we can have a difference of opinion. I've never kissed my father on the mouth. And what's weird for me doesn't mean it's bad. And it's okay. It, it, and we got to get to this point in America where it's okay to say things that's, that's weird to me, but it ain't bad. You know what right. I'm saying? We I don't. Have, oh, I, th I feel like we're being so fake when we make everything unicorns and rainbows because you can right. have an opinion on something without hating. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like there's, there's right. a difference, but I, I feel you. We do need to be a little bit more open because it's not like this in other countries. In America, hang, we're, hang around some Italians for a little while. You gonna, really, happy, learn, my, my you gonna really learn what love is. My, listen, my cousins in Italy walk around arm in arm and that and men and no one says anything. Right. It doesn't mean they're gay. Right. Not that that's a bad thing. All right. So let's move on real quick. Uh, I just got a notice that they FDA has authorized a Pfizer coronavirus vaccine. So hopefully my stock goes through the roof on Monday. But um, anyways, uh, we have this whole issue with the vaccination. And it's been revealed from Dr. Fauci that a black woman uh, was, you know, part of creating this vaccine. So do y'all think that's going to make Black folks be more comfortable with taking this or not? Who wants to take this? Oh, I think oh, absolutely. Black, oh, no, go ahead. Go ahead, Q. I think Black people, uh, you know, just in general, have a, a huge mistrust for, for the medical system and the government. I think that this is great for history books, that this woman is behind this vaccine. But I've been listening to the conspiracy theorists on Twitter, and they swear that that's just the man propping her up in the front to try to convince us to take it. Listen, the fact that she's named Dr. Kizmikia Corbet, I'm going to trust whatever the hell she say, like dead ass. And you know what's so interesting? I went to the opening of the uh, Leadership Academy, Oprah's Leadership Academy in South Africa, and she said, you, you empower Black women. The reason why she did Black women only, young girls, was because Black women go back to the community and they teach everybody what to do. I think this is an example of that. We are in a pandemic where people are dying, and it's disproportionately affecting African Americans. This Dr. Kazmikia Corbe, they call her Dr. Kizzy. She is giving us confidence to know that if I worked on it, then it's worth taking and it's safe. So I'm with it. All right.